cool. So I was doing, doing okay, doing okay. Yeah, um, it's been a, been a strange semester. And then it's gonna be a strange break when we have like two months off in the winter. It's gonna be like, what are we, do I get a winter job? Is that a thing now? Where like a summer job used to be a thing? Like this is, it's gonna be some interesting. They are, yeah. In fact, they just sent out a, um, a request for, um, for classes, kind of like uh, the Maymester thing that we have, but it'll be longer. So they sent out a proposal like for faculty that want to teach to send them in. And then once they hear from us, yeah. What would be a cool December Mester class? Because the thing is, it's probably gonna have to be online. I don't know. What? Humanities, there you go, yep. <laughs> Humanities, compress the reading and the, I actually kind of feel, I don't know, I almost feel like group discussions work better online than in person. Because uh, like when my humanities went online back in the spring, none of you out there haven't, no. Uh, we just went to all these small group discussions and they were kind of cool, like five or six people, like you could actually chat. Whereas, I don't know, you get above like seven or eight and it, it gets funky, but yeah, like humanities. There you go. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Somebody was saying that power, because you ask a question and then you just wait. And like eventually, like somebody, you know, but. I, yeah, on the one hand, it's good to be comfortable with silence. On the other hand, like sometimes after sitting in silence for 10 seconds, then you share what you thought you were going to share. Yeah. Yeah. So they are. So I don't know what courses will be offered. Um, I don't know in our department that we've. Yeah, I mean, it'd be probably one of these like special topics things. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if like any core, any core courses like energy and society or um, I don't know. I mean, seminar, I suppose you could do on like a super fast schedule, but um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, man. I'm, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting more optimistic as it goes along. So, so any questions on the, the, um, the annotated bibliography, first of all, I, the, I think the instructions in the, uh, in the syllabus there. It's a week from the day. Yeah. So um, whichever date that is. And yeah, and so, you know, the idea is that assignment is really, it's, it's, it's for you. Um, yeah, the 21st, yep. And just a reminder, uh, cover letter and resumes are not due on Wednesday uh, because the date that Lisa is coming to visit got bumped back. They're due on the 28th. So two weeks from today is your cover letter and resume. Um, and we won't be peer reviewing that, but we will be peer reviewing the annotated bibliography. So um, to be sure to bring in three copies of that to share. But that, yeah, so that, that, that's a, a tool for you uh, to kind of help with your, um, with your project as it moves along a little bit. So I want to talk a little bit more about the grant proposal. And um, if you have, uh, with you, the, the call for proposals, uh, you're, you'll notice that it has a fairly, um, fairly tightly organized or, or a, a fairly strict format, I guess you'd say. And I tried to make this as realistic as possible. Like if you're applying for a grant from like a professional organization, like this is kind of how it would be. Um, I suppose I could, I could pull it up, but I'm actually not gonna talk about it that much. Uh, but just to let you know, like, be sure and follow the instructions, because one of the things about writing grant proposals is following the instructions really closely. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the steps uh, for writing the grant proposal. And so this will be a little more of a broader discussion than like specifically for this class, because uh, you know, you've already got your topic, you've got some steps lined out for you. But 
Um, I hear from a lot of students that, you know, grant writing is something that they do a lot after they graduate from here. So it's good to kind of have the idea in your, in your mind as you're, as you're kind of moving into the process. So if we just think of a few steps, um, really the first thing you want to do is define your project. And when you think about it, like a grant is an amazing thing because somebody is paying you money to do something that you want to do. So I don't know about y'all, I've found that when I have ideas in my head, I think they're brilliant and amazing and incredible. And then I start writing them down and I'm like, oh wait, I've got to figure this out. Oh wait, how does that connect? So when you have ideas for something that you'd like to do, it could be a research project, it could be a community development project, you want to kind of define what you want to do and start filling in those gaps. And then an important part next is to identify the funding agency. So there are all kinds of different groups that, that provide grants. There are um, academic institutions like UNCA. We talked about the Green Grants Program. Um, we've had a few. Uh, there are uh, national granting organizations of all different kinds um, related to professional organizations. Anybody know of some, what are some organizations that provide grants that you've heard of? Asheville Greenworks does, yeah, they have a little grants program and I think it depends on their, um, on their funding. So yeah, so there can, so, yeah, no, that's, that's great. So you can have local nonprofits. Uh, there's some others, there's, um, there's a group called the, uh, the Pigeon River Trust Fund. They provide grants for like aquatic work around here. Conserving Carolina is a big nonprofit that y'all may have heard of. We've got local nonprofits. You've got uh, educational institutions. So then, yeah, so national organizations. These can be, what are some national organizations that come to mind in the environmental field? What? EPA, absolutely. They, they have a small grants program, which is like up to a million dollars. So small grants program, yeah. NOAA, NOAA uh-huh. So yeah, so these are uh, sort of government organizations, yeah. Um, yeah, Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, I mean, I'll put it here a little broadly. So I guess when I said national, I was thinking about, about nonprofits and government. So you know, things like Sierra Club, um, yeah, Defenders of Wildlife. I don't know if they have any kind of grants program or not. Um, so we can, we can say nonprofit and government. How, how do you hear about these organizations? These programs, how do you hear about grant programs? Yeah. What's that? It's like an auction. You got to be careful. If you go to, you should be careful because if you go to an auction and you shrug like that, you might buy something and be like, sold for $1.3 million. The emblazoned rock of, I don't know, something. Really? So I don't know, man, for me, like the way I hear about these are through my peers. And I just think it points out again, like how important it is to be kind of like connected in professional networks, like, like join an organization in your field. So like in the ecological realm, there's like Ecological Society of America in, um, you know, there's like American Fisheries Society. American Society of Ichthyologists and Herpetologists. There are all these groups of people that have like interests. Somebody on the management and policy side, like what are some orga professional organizations on the management and policy side? Any, any, uh, any organizations come to mind? So 
So they're a local nonprofit. Yeah, they might have some grants. I guess I'm thinking, so, yeah, I think they do. So, so I guess I'm thinking like ways to bring like-minded people together. So connect with your networks and that's really how you find out, yeah. The Collider, yeah, uh-huh. They're having actually a program coming up here soon on uh, um, climate change connections. Yeah. Everybody's environment, environment. uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. It's cool that you guys mentioned all local organizations. Yeah, so just, you know, you wanna be in networks. You wanna be connected with people that have your interest. That's how you find out about these things. Um, so go to a rally indoors with hundreds of people and get to know your professional network. No, don't do that right now. Um, don't wanna do that. Um, okay, yeah, and then state, local government then is another one, right? So um, organizations like the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission, um, Land of Sky Regional Council, all these sorts of, of, of people have, uh, have, grant, um, have grants that are available. So it's real important that you match the two of these up. So when you have an idea and you look to get it funded, um, writing a grant is not a short process. It's gonna take a lot of your time and energy. And so you wanna make sure that it's a match. What's a good way to figure out if the agency you're thinking about is interested in the kind of work that you wanna do? So there's something called a, a mission statement that if it's a nonprofit or an organization, they will have, in fact, um, government agencies do as well. But you, especially when you're looking at the granting program itself, like look for those mission statements. You wanna make sure that, that they wanna fund uh, what you wanna do. Another way is to contact them. Again, you always want to be looking for ways to build your professional networks. And if calling somebody to ask if they'll fund the type of grant that you're trying to do leads to having a conversation with someone in the environmental field, that's awesome, right? So, so go ahead and reach out. You can read the mission statement from the comfort on your, of your own home, but then it's really good to reach out as well. And so that leads to our number three, which is that once you have decided that there's a match, however that happens, you want to contact the funders. And you'd be surprised, you know, even national organizations have people whose job it is to answer questions about grants. And so even if your conversation leads to you not submitting a grant proposal, again, there's like one more person that you've met. There's one more person that knows who you are one more person that's kind of in that professional network. So you always wanna be looking for ways to connect with people and build those networks, all right? What are some questions you might ask that grant funding agency when you drop them a line? Uh-huh, yeah, absolutely. So types of, types of proposals that they fund in the past. And you might be able to get some of that um, online, but maybe not. And you can ask them specifically about your project. Like, is this something that you think you would be interested in doing? You can ask them about the review process. You know, what's, what's that review process like? You might ask them those things that aren't on the, on the website, like what's your policy about late submissions? I found this great funding agency. It lines up with my project so well and the deadline's in 10 days. Would you at all consider a project that came in after that, right? Because making that human can, you know, I don't know, man. It's like a lesson for life. It's like, once you start meeting the people that are behind making all the decisions, you start to realize that like some of those hard and fast deadlines like aren't as hard as fast as, aren't as hard and fast as everyone would make you think. So like make, again, make that personal connection um, yeah, so also a lot of funding agencies uh, offer technical assistance on grant writing, which you might not necessarily think of, but we uh, just, a grant I was involved with involving several different departments um, was just funded from the National Science Foundation and they had somebody that worked with the main grant writer every step of the way. 
like reviewing the process and stuff. So like, so ask, right? So you don't want that person to see that grant proposal for the very first time when you submit it, if they can help you along the way. Because they might ask, they might answer questions like, is this too much money? You know, like you say you can fund something up to $100,000. Are you gonna look more favorably on my project if it's for 12,000 or like 98,000, right? Maybe they only have $100,000 to give. So they'd rather fund 10 small ones than one big one, right? Do y'all know what, what matching funds are? Yeah, so some granting agencies, they wanna make sure you've got skin in the game, right? They wanna make sure you're not just, you know, throwing stuff out to see what sticks. They wanna make sure this is a project that you're really invested in. So when it comes to matching funds, a lot of these organizations require matching funds. So if I ask for $20,000, they might say, you know, we require 60% matching funds. So if, we, if, you know, so if you bring uh, 12,000, we'll give you 8,000, something like that. But sometimes there's ways around that. Like, so they, they want matching funds to, to show your investment in the project, right? Um, but sometimes you can do what are called in-kind matches. These are all things that are good to ask about. Do you know what in-kind matches are? So in-kind matches just mean um, I'm going to make a contribution in kind, something other than monetary. So like maybe I've got like a group of volunteers that are going to help with their, put their time into this project. So, you know, if I value their time at $10 an hour and we've got like 20 volunteers who are going to come out here um, for two hours on three weekends, that's what, six times 20, so that's 120 hours times 10 is like a thousand. So you can, you can lay out your matching funds through, um, through in kind, through, through activities that are not strictly monetary. They're, they're another way of doing it. Or you might say, hey, I've got this, this equipment <clears throat> that I'm going to use for this project. Uh, if we were to have to buy a new, it would cost us $2,000. But I'm going to use this equipment that I've got around anyway. And so like I can use that as my match. So all these are, are things to think about when you're contacting, um, when you're contacting those, those funders. Um, and so, so then uh, the fourth thing to think about is just to get the proposal guidelines, which have been generously provided to you, I guess generously, I don't know, have been provided to you by the Gillette Foundation. Um, so you've got those guidelines. So we've got our guidelines. Sometimes those are really lengthy. But you've got that, so you don't have to worry about that. Then, how do I want to put this? Analyze the submission deadlines. Now you all know that if you have a paper due, a research paper due on the 5th of October, there's a bunch of things that have to happen before you submit that, right? So once you know that submission deadline, you want to start working back from there and assigning yourself smaller deadlines. Mm, I've conveniently done that for you already in our schedule of this grant proposal, but you're gonna need the pieces in different parts at different times. So first thing to think about is, is to be realistic. If you can even get it submitted then, um, and if not, just, you know, wait till next year. Uh, I still remember this time that I was submitting a grant and it had to be in PDF format. And this is before you could just save files as PDFs. It was so aggravating and I was not able to get it saved I mean, I saw the guy going back and forth. Oh, it was so stressful. We, 
didn't get that grant because we didn't manage our time very well. Um, so then you're going to start working back. And once you know what your deadline is, a big part of this is going to be your personnel and equipment needs. Now this is something that's going to be really relevant to your, um, your project now. So if this is something where you're going to need um, like earth moving equipment, right? If you're going to uh, be creating a garden, you're going to have to start looking at who can do that for you. Maybe getting a few different bids to try to get that done as inexpensively as possible. Uh, and that's all going to take time, right? So think about the time you'll need to get estimates and things like this. Um, personnel as well, right? So if I'm going to be creating a community garden, uh, you know, I'm going to need people that can get out there and help me work. Um, I might have people that are helping me write the grant. And so these are all conversations that you need to have as soon as possible uh, once you realize um, kind of what those, what those deadlines are like, right? <clears throat> as we're working through these things. So ask about availability of the people that you need. Because the other thing most grant proposals are going to require is a, a timeline. Uh, and so you need to know if they're available when, when you need them, right? So think about these different needs. And you want to be continually updating timeline. So this is going to look something like, all right, I have this thing submitted on October the 5th. When you guys do your best work, how many, how many drafts of a paper do you do? You do? when you're doing your very best work. Because when you submit this, right, you want it to be your very best work. How many grant, how many paper drafts realistically do you need to really nail it? At least three. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big believer in uh, writing very bad first drafts that nobody sees but you. <laughs> I was t talking to my son about this the other day. He, he was, actually just yesterday, he was writing a paper and he's like, oh, I don't know how to start this. Well, it doesn't matter, right? Start in the middle, start wherever you want to start. Just start putting ideas, laying them out there, connecting them. Um, but yeah, I think, I think three is good. And of course, you know, the more polished your first draft is, the fewer drafts you need, don't make your first draft very polished. Just like don't, just, it's all about ideas, you know? Start connecting them, that's kind of how that works. So, so if you need three drafts, let's say, you're gonna need at least a day, give yourself a day to submit that grant. Now you can look at your Google calendar with all your other classes and stuff and see what's going on, right? But give yourself a full day. Okay, and give yourself a day to do the draft before that. And maybe ask some friends to review that for you. Now again, we've kind of built these activities into our from that initial timeline and start, start creating stuff um, along, along the way there. And give yourself time to get some feedback, right? So it's really good to start now. If you have a buddy in some of your classes that you work pretty well together, just establish a relationship where like, hey, they'll look over your work, they'll give your work a five minute look over anytime. Right? And you're, you're free to give theirs a five minute look over. And, you know, it's not hours out of your time. It's like, hey, could you just read this over and like give me a big picture, you know, thought on it, big picture take on it. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we're kind of becoming more and more individualized and COVID has been like bad for that in some ways. But like people are resources, right? Like everyone in this class are your resources. So, so we're gonna do peer review here, but even in classes where you're not, just you know, start building relationships with people where it's like, hey, you know, I've got this thing due on Monday. Uh, if I send it to you on Friday, could you carve you know, 10 minutes out of your day to just look at it and give me big picture feedback? So you wanna build time in your, into your, um, your timeline to do that as well.
Cool. So constantly be updating your work timeline, right? Give yourself many deadlines. When are you going to have each part done? If you're like me, when you start thinking of all the little parts to get done, you realize there's a lot more time that's required than you thought at first, right? So the components to the proposal, uh, there's going to be an abstract, of course, which we've talked a fair amount, of, fair amount about. Um, then we have the narrative. And that's comprised of a couple of different, different components. So um, our literature review. Our statement of need. Our approach, method of evaluation, work cited, and then your timeline. All right, so this is the component of your narrative. And then we have another part, we have a budget and some supporting materials. But what, what should be the goal of our literature review? Yeah, you wanna show the reviewer that you understand what's going on in the field, right? So if I am uh, proposing to create a community garden, I want to show the reviewer that I'm familiar with the benefits of community gardens and I kind of know what's going on, right? So this kind of builds your case for what you want to do. And it transitions into the statement of need, right? So the statement of need says, this is why this particular project is, is required, right? This is why it's needed based on all this information, right? So the statement of need is fairly short, but it should clearly describe the reason the project is necessary. So this tells us kind of what's known about the project and how it's likely to succeed. But then when the reviewer reads the statement of need, they should really understand um, why it needs to be funded and what, what's going on there. <clears throat> okay. Then the approach, what's gonna be going on with the approach? Yeah, yeah, it's it's right. It's kind of like the <laughs> it's say, it's it's written very similarly, but it's saying what you're going to do instead of what you did. Exactly. So the approach is going to lay out what you're going to do. Now, the more detail you can put into your approach, the more prepared it makes you look. The more it shows that you're actually going to be able to do what you're proposing to do, right? So with that approach, the more detail you can give, the better. But you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. So if someone has done a project that's real similar to what you want to do, you can use their example. They might have a schematic of how they set up a garden. They might have a timetable of how they did that. So that can strengthen your case too. If you talk about something that was similar to what, you're, what you want to do um, that was done not so long ago, then, that, then that'll help. So don't feel like you have to completely reinvent the wheel. But there, there needs to be enough detail here that the reviewers will say, yeah, they could get this thing started real quick, right? They could kind of hit the ground running. <clears throat> the method of evaluation, right? So grant agencies always want to know that you're going to be successful in what you're doing, and they want to know how, you, how you're going to measure that, right? So if I'm creating a community garden, what measures might tell me that that project has been successful? Any thoughts? Photos. So what would those photos be showing? Okay, so one would be maybe like I just built the garden. So you could do like a timeline, yeah, yeah. 
absolutely. And then, you know, probably in my literature view statement of need, I'll, I'd probably say something about like providing food to people or getting community involvement. So pictures are a great way to do that. Yeah, it's a really great way to, to, um, to document that. Uh, and be thinking about like, what numbers can you use to show that your project was successful too? So maybe like number of people working, pounds of food produced, whatever it is, just be thinking about how are you going to evaluate that this project was successful. All right, so this is kind of the main part of the proposal here. Um, work cited, I think you're fairly um, familiar with and you will be with your, uh, your annotated bibliography. And then uh, the timeline is just going to kind of lay out when you're going to do the, these different things. Um, any, any questions on the format of the grant proposal? Yeah, grant proposal writing is very, very specific. Yeah. Yeah, that's up to you. So like, if it makes more sense for you to just start your project in the spring, that, that's great. I guess I just put that in there um, to be thinking about like, when you're doing your timeline, like when would you start it? So depending on the activity, like if it's something that you could get rolling on in the fall, then you could start it then. Um, uh, so yeah, that's just, you know, kind of to be thinking, thinking time-wise. So yeah, I mean, realistically, I mean, probably spring would be more realistic, but uh, anyway, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I put that later, but I put it for me. Um, good question. Other thoughts or questions? So this is kind of the lay of the land. If it were, of course, this is the part you're going to do first, right? Because this is going to emerge from your annotated bibliography. But be thinking as you're doing that, like what will your statement of need look like? Because that's going to transition out of your lit review. Um, so if any of you have questions about this um, and want to consult with me, that's fine. I've got office hours today. Feel free to send me an email uh, as well. Um, but you know, just remember the 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 mission of the Gillette Foundation, right? Something that increases the extent to which we live sustainably on Earth. So that's really broad. You can do a bunch of stuff that would fit into that, you know, don't feel that you limit, have to limit yourself by your personal experience. So if there's something you're interested in doing that you haven't done yet, that's totally fine. This can be kind of a learning exploratory experience for you too. Um, so maybe a little more free form creative than if you were, uh, you know, actually asking for money. I wish I had money to give to you, but maybe this will prepare you to get money from somewhere else. So. Um, Cool, so there's a couple more pieces of this uh, we'll talk about uh, next time, um, but um, awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, drop me a line if you have any questions about the, the, your topics or the process, um, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday.